inherited an apple. Yeah, I'm an old man in this industry. <laughs> Did you ever want to give up? Hmm? Did you ever think of giving up? Uh, oh, there were moments where it was pretty tough. There have been moments, but no, I don't think so. I don't oh. think so. The first year or two was the hardest. The, the most important thing, though, I think, is that if you're going to start something new, you have to feel passionate about it because it's really hard. It's so hard to start a company. You have to work so hard that if you're not passionate about it, you'll give up. Mm. And um, most of the difference between people that succeed and people that don't is the people that don't give up. Oh, I see. They give up sooner than the people that succeed. And um, you have to be passionate about it because it's so difficult. You are, you've been called a visionary. And uh -oh. what, <laughs> uh -oh. <laughs> how do you believe will be the role of the personal computer? What do you think will be the role the personal computer should play? The personal computer is, is entering um, its third great age. Third great age? Third great age. The first great age started around 1980, and that was the age of productivity with the spreadsheets and word processors and things like that. Mm -hmm. uh, and that primarily benefited businesses. Uh, about six or seven years ago, we began the second great age, which was the age of the Internet. Mm -hmm. And uh, all of a sudden, not only businesses were benefiting, but, but uh, regular people, consumers. We, we could buy these for our homes, and our children could get on the Internet, we could get on the Internet, and it was tremendous. But now that's maturing a little bit. And we're beginning the third great age, which is the age of digital lifestyle, which is being triggered by all these wonderful digital devices, right. most of which are coming from Japan. So we have digital camcorders, we have digital cameras, um, we have uh, DVD players, we have uh, handheld computers, we have cell phones, and all of these things, actually, the personal computer can make them even better. We first created the personal computer in and there was no personal computer in 1975. It's, right. it's, it's very hard to believe. Well, that's why we made one. Yes. We made one because we wanted one and we, we, there, there wasn't one, so we had to make one. Did you know that when you made the personal computer, though, that this would become a major industry? I mean, uh, did you know like this? No, no. It took about a year before we started to sense it. I had a partner named Steve Wozniak, right. who's a brilliant guy. Mm -hmm. And uh, he did most of the engineering on the original Apple I and the Apple II. Mm -hmm. And after about a year, we showed it to our, we just made it for ourselves. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and we showed it to our friends, and they all wanted one. Mm -hmm. And so we were busy making these computers by hand for our friends, and we, it was taking all of our life, <laughs> <laughs> uh, all of our spare time. Uh -huh. And so we decided we better manufacture a hundred of these to get, you know, so that we can not have to spend the rest of our lives mm -hmm. making them for our friends. And that's how we got into this. We didn't think about starting a company. We were just doing it for ourselves and then our friends and then the circle got bigger and bigger and bigger. Now there's 25 million people. So you were having fun. Oh, yeah. I've, we've always had fun doing this. So many young people are aspiring to become, you know, startup venture, um, you know, venture uh, companies and right. emulate um, something like Apple for themselves. And sometimes people come to me and say, I want to start a company. And I say, why? They say, oh, I want to make lots of money. <laughs> I say, forget it. That's not a good enough reason. You will not, most likely you will not succeed. Most people that have started companies because they want to make lots of money, I haven't seen very many of those succeed. Mm -hmm. um, the ones that succeed are people that come, sometimes they don't even want to start a company. They just have an idea that they want to get out, express out into the world. Mm -hmm. And oftentimes they have to start a company because nobody else will listen to them. Mm. You know, think different is easy to say. I mean, it's just two words. It's easy to say, but much harder to do. <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah. But it's a company of 10,000 people. Yeah. How do you permeate the message throughout all the employees? What do you say to them? Well, you permeate it by um, uh, example, ultimately. Uh, and in other words, when something's not quite good enough, do you stop and make it better, or do you just ship it? You know, and everybody watches when you, to see how the senior management makes those decisions. And what we've tried to do is stop and make it great before we ship it. And we have problems, stop and fix them. And, and by example, uh, uh, you can say anything you want, but everybody watches very carefully when you're in a difficult situation, mm -hmm. what decisions you make, do what you values you have. I mean, there are so many Japanese companies 
who are now trying to rejuvenate themselves, trying to instill a sense of sort of a venture spirit in their mm -hmm. companies. And they would like to know how you do it. And, you know, it's probably very not, that's not, that it's probably not easy to do. Yeah, you know, we try to hire really smart people, but we have a very simple organization, mm -hmm. and we try to focus and do very few things well. And focusing's hard, because focusing doesn't mean saying yes, it means saying no. So we, say n we, s we decide not to do a lot of things, so we can focus on oh. a few handfuls of things and do them well. And um, I think, uh, you know, everybody working at a company wants to do something great. Mm -hmm. They want to be excited about what they're working on, mm -hmm. and uh, and they want to be recognized for it uh, when if they do a really great job. So we just try to allow people to do the best work of their lives mm -hmm. at Apple and get it out to 25 million customers that we have, mm -hmm. and that's very exciting. And when you're working on something, and you know if this works out, up to 25 million people are going to use this. It's very motivating. Mm. You know? And it's not just 25 million of our customers, but uh, other companies tend to follow us. You know, it takes them a few years, but other companies tend to copy what we do if it works. Right. And, uh, and so we can influence the whole industry. Mm. Because the environment of personal computers is becoming very, very, I'd say, um, I say negative. Mm -hmm. The personal computer market is not so vibrant. Mm -hmm. It used to be the engine for the American growth. What is your um, perception as a entrepreneur for the yeah, I, I'm not, prospect? I don't see it quite the same way, but that's okay because Apple's in a great spot. Apple, maybe three or four years ago, was, was a little fragile. Mm -hmm. um, but in the last three or four years, uh, everyone at Apple's worked so hard and we've got such great customers that we've sold a lot of computers. But some people say that we're now entering a post-PC era, mm -hmm. that the personal computer age is behind us. And right. there are many, many portable net applications that sure. are available. Why do you think the PC can be the center? Well, because let me give you, see, we've been focusing on the Internet for the last six, seven years, and that's been appropriate. But the Internet is, is just one of the things we can do with a computer. And let me give you an example. The Internet, I love the Internet, but the Internet is, 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 has no emotion to it. The Internet's very... It's an information It's very. It's exchange. just information. It's very intellectual. And the bandwidth isn't there to deliver emotion. To deliver emotion, you have to have higher bandwidth. Uh, and, and so most people don't have Internet connections mm -hmm. that are high enough bandwidth. Most content is not created for the Internet to be emotional. And um, we see at Apple, one of the things we've always felt is that we want to stand at the intersection of, of technology and humanities. Mm. We want to bring the humanist element into these tools and not have them just serve our intellectual side, but have them serve some other sides of, of, of us uh, as well. And so that's, that's, I think, what we do particularly well. Mm. Why do you think you need to put emotion into it now, though? There's a lot of forces in life that tend to... Uh, tend to funnel us down into this institutionalized path mm. um, and where people you know in, in, where people sometimes forget that um, that they're very unique mm. and that they have very unique feelings and perspectives and um, again it's you know the whole computer industry wants to forget about the humanist side right. and just focus on the technology and um, a lot of our industry focuses just on more is better more megahertz and megabytes mm -hmm. and you know s speeds and feeds we call it mm -hmm. but we think there's a whole other side to the coin which is what do you do with these things can we do more than just spreadsheets and word processors mm -hmm. can we help you express yourself in richer ways in your music in your movies in your photography and these kinds of things that people want to do. Uh, do you have a camcorder? Mm, I do have a camcorder, yeah. but not a digital. <laughs> but you have a camcorder. Yes. And you, ta you take lots of footage. Mm -hmm. Do you ever go back and watch it much? Or does it just mm -hmm. sit on tapes on the shelf? Yes, it's yeah. hard to go back and watch. You right. keep taking more and more. Because it's really boring. Mm. So what you really want to do is edit it down and make a little movie. And then you watch that movie over and over, and you can send it to your family, you can send it to your friends, you can put it on the Internet. Well, as an example, I have some children, 
and uh, four I, children, I and I shoot <laughs> some footage, and I I remember making my first iMovie where I could edit the clips together, and I could put some cross dissolves in and some titles on, mm -hmm. and then I, I took one of my favorite pieces of music and stuck it in and added a soundtrack, and I made about a three-minute movie, and it was I showed it to my wife, and she started crying. But you have to be so creative yourself. No, I don't know you how don't. many people can be so creative as to want to spend their time making movies and, you know, listening to digital music. Maybe somebody like you, who is very, very digitalized, well, actually, can, you know, can, can help. We've had over a million customers make movies now with iMovie. Mm -hmm. Over a million. And mm -hmm. some of the movies are, you know, maybe not are better than others. Mm -hmm. But they all are very emotional. And yet our industry, the whole personal computer industry, hasn't really talked to that side of people before. Mm -hmm. We've just talked to the side of people that has to add up you know, numbers and write a, a letter. But it's, it, there's so much more to it than that. And I think we're finally, with this digital lifestyle era opening, going to be addressing those other things that all of us do, you know, some of every single day. I mean, you said that you've become an old man in the industry yeah. <laughs> after 30 years. But do you see what do, how do you see yourself 10 years from now? You know, my, my headlights are not that good. I don't know. Mm. I don't really think about it. Mm. You know, I think about a year, or two, three down the road. We have some projects at Apple that are sort of maybe four years down the road, five years, uh, probably like three or four at the most. Mm -hmm. Because things change too much. You can be going down a path, you say, well, in five years I want to be here, mm -hmm. but then something new happens, and you, you just say, forget that, I want to be over there. So oh. most of this five-year planning that I've seen in my life, um, some of it's essential, but most of it uh, changes too quickly. So mm -hmm. we tend to look three, four years. It's about as far ahead as we